Okay, today we're doing a video on the Green Mountain Railroad. A little tiny cog train that once ran up Green Mountain, today called Cadillac Mountain. Ran from Eagle Lake all the way to the top of the summit of Cadillac Mountain. This is the entrance into the park, one of them, on West Street Extension. To find West Street Extension, you want to go down by the Bahaba Town Pier, at the bottom of Main Street, that street that runs along the ocean down there, that's West Street. You follow that past all the old inns and summer homes, and you're going to come up to Route 3 to a kind of an odd intersection. You want to cross that intersection and continue up what is West Street Extension. This will take you right into the park. And as you can see, the park is currently, large sections of it are currently blocked off on the Park Loop Road due to the government sequester. Hopefully the government will get this act together one day and we'll have this thing open like it's supposed to be, but right now, large sections are closed off. It's supposed to all open up in about another three or four weeks. Okay, you want to follow... West Street Extension, all the way up to the stop sign in the park, and it's going to come at the base. It's going to stop right at the base of Great Hill, where there used to be all kinds of hiking trails in the early 1800s. The park don't want people up there anymore, so all the trails have been discontinued. And at this point, you want to turn left onto the Park Loop Road. If you go right. That will take you in the direction of House Cove and the Park Visitor Center down in House Cove. But we're going to be going left in the direction of Cadillac Mountain. Okay, you're going to come to this section right here as you're heading toward Cadillac Mountain by Jordan Pond, Tea House, or the Bubbles, or any of those locations. They're all along here. And Right down here is a little entrance ramp from the Eagle Lake, I mean, yeah, the Eagle Lake Road, uh, 233. So, from the Eagle Lake Road, you can hop right onto the Park Loop Road here as well, and can you, and continue on toward Cadillac Mountain. Okay, here's, here's where you come to the sign that tells you where the one-way section begins. The one-way section will take you toward Sand Beach, the Nature Center, the Wild Gardens, one of the Abbey Museum, one of the two Abbey Museums. Um, we're not going that direction. We're going to continue straight ahead toward Cadillac Mountain and Jordan Barn. Okay, you're going to come to this sign along the two-way section of the Park Loop Road as we continue toward Cadillac Mountain and Jordan Barn. The sign says Cadillac Mountain to the left. That's pointing to the Cadillac Mountain Summit Road which is right up there on the left. We're not going to turn left. We're going to keep going straight ahead toward Jordan Pond. And at this point, you want to start paying attention to the pullovers because there's going to be two small pullovers on the right-hand side of the road after the entrance to the Summit Road. So continue toward Jordan Pond, and we're heading for the second pullover. Okay, right here, just past the Cadillac Mountain Summit Road, we continue toward Jordan Pond and Bubble Pond, which is just down at the bottom of this steep hill. But this is the first pullover. We're going for the second pullover, but this is the first one. It's lined with rock with the square granite blocks. The second pullover is smaller than this one, so you're going to have to look for it. It's on the right, right hand side of the road. Almost on a curve. So just keep looking for it. Okay, right up ahead is the second pullover. That's where we want to go. But I'm going to give you a little landmark. If you make your way back in the direction you came, uh, several car lengths, you come to this fast-moving stream that passes under the road. This always has fast-moving water in it, so this will be a landmark. To let you know that you're at the right pullover. Now we're, we're going to go back to that 
little pullover up ahead for the next video clip. Okay, we're at that second pullover, and we're standing right in the center of the pullover. That's where you want to be, right in the center. And look directly across the street, or road, whatever the hell it is. Anyway, you're going to see this knoll, and you got a couple of trees there, tall pines. Just go right up in there between the end, make your way up that knoll. You're going to start to see, you're going to just get in there, and you're going to start to see some granite blocks in the ground and then you're going to see the trail it's going to be fairly obvious you go up the knoll a little ways just a short distance and you're going to turn to the left and then you're going to see your first rock pile so that's where the trail actually begins is the easy way to get to it is right from the center of the second pullover and like i said just up the road just a just a tad up the road you got a fast moving stream that goes under the road that will be your landmark that you're at the right pullover. Now, the railroad track itself cut at an angle across the road here. At the beginning of the parking lot, it went down in the woods and made its way at an angle towards Eagle Lake. But most of those railroad spikes have been removed. There's still a few, and I've been able to follow the original trail for a, for a distance through the woods. But after a while, you just lose it, because most, most of the spikes on this side have been removed. That's why it's a lot easier following the trail from this side of the road on the other side and make your way up Cadillac Mountain from here. And it's pretty cool, because you can actually see places where there's going to be railroad bed built up with granite and stuff, and it's going to be very clear that a train used to pass through here. In different places so we're gonna make our way up that knoll right now at the start of the trail okay we just came up that little knoll from the parking lot and the trail just a short ways up the knoll the trail moves to the left for just a short distance before moving in the direction of going up toward the mountain and there's a rock pile up ahead so that's been there as long as I know as long as I've come here, that rock pile has always been here up ahead. And if I pan back down in the direction of where we just came, you're going to see the road right there in the parking lot, a little pullover. And right there is the rock, so I told you about, is we're coming up over the hill, a little knoll. I believe that's an old rock pile. And here's the first rock pile right here. You'll see these at different places along the way. And actually, I didn't see that before, but there is the first railroad spike right there sticking up out of the ground. Rock pile, railroad spike, pack them out right behind me. And it moves up. It turns and moves up the side of Cadillac Mountain in that direction there from the rock pile. And as you make your way, you want to look through the, if there's a lot of leaves and stuff on the ground, just kind of kick back and forth with your feet and you'll find these railroad spikes sticking up in different places. Like, it's sort of like almost like a self-guide. Got one right there. And it continues up through, right now there's a couple of small trees that have leaned across the trail, but you can pretty well see it's pretty flat. You can almost sense where it goes, and you're also going to have stuff that was dragged here by ridge runners or rangers. Because they like to keep this place kind of disguised so you can't find it. So they're always moving stuff into the into the way. But just a little common sense will tell you where it, the direction it goes in. And if you got two or more people with you, have one scout up ahead zigzagging back and forth. And you'll find the railroad spikes or the rock piles. 
or some of the rearward bed here and there, you'll it'll it'll become obvious what direction to move in. And we're continuing to follow it up, follow the trail up. It's almost it, at this point, and we just I can still turn around and see the road from here. At this point, it almost looks like an old dirt road. Almost, it's like it's got a little groove on each side of it, and I mean, this thing is fairly easy to follow as you're getting, as you're starting out. Might be a few difficult spots up ahead, but the start of it, once you get going, it becomes more and more easy to follow at the beginning. Okay, we're still following the groove in the ground. And right, right there is another rock pile by that dead falling tree. But the ground is pretty well worn right up to that dead tree, so we're going to make our way and continue forward. Okay, just beyond that dead tree, that, that rock pile we were pointing at was right there. Get the dead tree, the rock pile, you can, you can clearly see it now. It's, and then the trail goes up through those trees. It almost looks like you can see an opening through the trees up ahead. And like the ground is still, despite some things on the here and there across the trail, you can still see where the trail goes. And you can see some rock piles up ahead. Well, you'll see them clearly when you're standing here. Again, so far nothing difficult about following this at this point. Okay, we're now at the opening in those trees. And the trail continues up through here. Got a little pine, that, little baby pine that's growing up in the center of the trail. That's okay. Uh, there's a rock pile. I'm looking for some other sign here. There's. Oh yeah, right there. There's a railroad spike sticking up. Which, if you're not careful, you can actually trip over these and. So. Be alert to those, because you'll have a rock pile, and then you have a rearward spike. And at different places, there won't be rock piles, but there'll be rearward spikes. And some of them stick up further than others, so keep that in mind as you're making your way up this trail. You can still, again, you can pretty well see where there's this little opening that continues on. Little worn spots. And here's another rock pile right here, just just not far after the other one. And again, the ground is pretty well flat and self-guiding. Now, the one thing that might change here is, like, maybe some of the rock piles may not be here if you come through here when you when you do. Some may not be here, or there may be rock piles in different places, because. The park wants to keep this as undiscovered as it can, and they send ridge runners in here, and they will they will do their best to take a, take apart these rock piles, and others will do their best to put them back up again, and sort of like a little wall that goes on. And the trail continues up ahead, but the one thing that won't change is the ground's always going to be worn where the train came through. Almost like an old road went through here. And there's always going to be those railroad spikes. Because if they could have been removed, they would have been removed a long time ago. And actually they did try to remove them and it was just too too much work and they left them. Left them in place, so. There you go. We'll continue on to the next video clip. Okay, then you can get to a point where... Well, a little pine tree grew up in the center of the path, so it kind of obscures it a little bit, but just look, just follow the worn ground, and look on the other side of that pine tree that's right in the middle of the worn ground, and you're going to see where the trail continues, beyond that little pine tree that grew up in the center. Okay, right after that tree that grew up in the center of the path, 
you know, a little of this, just a little bit of detective work. Just look, look around a little bit, and you'll you'll know you'll be able to see this stuff. But yeah, right beyond the other side of that little tiny pine, you'll see where the path goes. And again, you get a little bit of tree here and some little bit of debris up there, but you can pretty much see where the path goes right up through the clearing. So it's not that hard to follow again, but once you get to the other side of that little tree that grew up in the center of the path, you'll back on track again. And spots like this are really cool because as we continue up, I mean, it becomes so obvious that the train once passed right through here. I mean, it's just, it's wide open to either side, it, right down the middle. It's just so easy to follow. It's, you don't need to really even rely on railroad spikes and in places you don't even need a rock pile. It's just, you don't need any guide at all other than just the ground itself. It's, you can have some beautiful views up ahead. Another rock pile just beyond that last one. The ground is still fairly worn, so it's even if that rock pile wasn't there, I think you'd probably know where to go. Okay, here the we were coming up at one angle, and then it's kind of turned slightly, but it's actually gotten a lot easier to see. I mean, it almost looks like tire tracks coming through here where the railroad rails were laid down and you can almost sense a train passing through here I can see up ahead we got a little pine growing up another one one or two little pines in the path but leading right up to it it is so worn down I mean it's like you're on an old road it's not that hard to follow at all as you it, the further you go the easier it becomes to follow and we'll continue on up the hillside okay this is the first kind of rough area that we've come to that again I can kind of like having been here a few times I can see where to go but but you want to do when you get to this section you're just gonna look for a gully basically it's like one, what, like one side of where the, one of the rails was or something. It's like, I mean, you can still see it, but instead of like looking like an old road, it now looks like just like a, a path, sort of like, or a, yeah, I'd say like it looks like an old worn path. It's not as nice and clean and wide as it was before, but it's still fairly easy to find and follow. Okay, this is like we're getting into the area where it would be very helpful if you had a second person with you um, because this is what the, this is a little area that's a little rough to, to kind of follow right here you get this it's worn down right up to this tree that fell and then you kind of gotta like look beyond that tree and it's yeah you can kind of see a little bit but it's once you get through there then it's gonna open wide open again so that you get this little rough area so basically, follow the trail that you've been following, and if in any doubt at all, just keep, go straight ahead, straight ahead. It doesn't turn left, doesn't turn right, just go straight ahead, and you'll come to where it's, it's going to open up just like an old road again. Okay, we just got past one of the very few difficult spots to follow. And it's just a very short section. You just go straight ahead and you're gonna you're gonna see it's gonna open right up into this, which is a lot easier to follow. Again, this looks almost like an old road going through the woods. You can almost picture the train. And we're gonna continue on up ahead. And there's a rock pile right there in the center here. And at some point we're gonna start hitting a lot of rearward spikes sticking up. That's where we really got to be careful with as we're walking because we don't want to trip over one of those and end up falling on another one and driving it into our leg or our arm or something. So we have to watch our step as we get a little bit higher up. Then at this point, we come to a rock pile 
and you get a big tree here. But the tree's there for a reason because the rock the rock pile shows where the trail turns. And there's another rock pile over in that direction. So the trail's gonna turn right here. Another rock pile and we're going back straight up toward the side of the mountain again. Like I said, once you get off that little difficult part that was way back there, just that little short piece, it becomes a lot easier to follow once again. Okay, at this point, you're going to have to cross this, this area where the gully stops. And you just got this, like, area of, like, I don't know, kind of like dead trees and stuff. You get trees on the ground been there for a long time but basically this is where walking through the woods and doing this kind of thing tramping the woods and stuff this is where this comes in a lot handy if you're not used to that you probably don't want to continue but if you get a little exploration in your blood then all you got to do is just have a second person with you and have somebody go up ahead straight ahead walk straight ahead through this stuff and you're going to come to the other side where We're right here. The trail opens up wide open again, and the man-made railroad, railroad bed is right up ahead, which is pretty cool. So the trail gets easy to follow once you get across this dead area. But like I said, if you have a second person with you, how we do it is, It's like I'm standing here, and I got a second person with me who's down there where the, where the trail became hard to follow for that little section. And so if I if I can't find where I'm going, all I got to do is call out to the second person, and they're gonna call back to me where they're at. And that way nobody gets lost. So it's not that far you have to go through here to get back to where the trail is easy to follow again. And we, as we continue to follow the railway bed, we have a rock pile right in the center here that I just came to. And the railway bed continues on up. This is just easy as hell to follow right here. Okay, we're continuing up the railway bed here, and we're going to walk this, I guess. Don't trip and fall. But this is just railway bed, railroad beds and chunks of granite here and there, and rock pile just stepped around. Got those here. Continuing on up. Okay, now, this is where, the further up you go, you're going to start getting into this. There's like, to the left of us, there's like a little brook that runs by, a, really a little brook or a little thing of water. And some of that comes over onto the granite that, that the train followed. And you're going to get to these sections of granite like this that are wet. They get like some moss on them and stuff, and that's, that is slippery as hell. So you're going to have to make your way up, probably sticking to the left or the right of the trail, because going up the center, unless you get some kind of cleats on your feet, it's going to be very slippery. And right here, just a little further up, again, you get like a rock wall of granite and stuff here. So the trail follows that. And, again, the ground pretty much shows you where to go. The ground is, looks like a path went through here. We're going to continue on. 
And here we leave the wall of rock and we start going back into the woods again. And I'm trying to avoid the center of the trail because it rained pretty hard the other day and it it is really slippery walking on that granite right now. But luckily there's kind of like grassy sides. So the footing's pretty good as long as you stay to the side. But I don't think I've ever come up through here when the granite hasn't been really slippery in some spots. So no matter what time of the year you come up through here, just watch your footing. Okay, as you continue forward, it looks like it looks like the path just ends. But I'm going to try to walk up here without falling. If you walk just up to where it looks like it comes to an end, and you look on the other side, and there's the trail again. So all we have here is a couple of little pine trees that have grown up in the center of the trail, and it, they're blocking the rest of the trail. So just snoop around a little bit, and you'll find where the trail continues. Okay, as I continue on, there's a railroad spike right there. You can see how these things blend in. Don't want to trip over them, and as you go up, there's more and more railroad spikes. Another one right there. And we're just following this this line right here of railroad spikes in a little worn area, worn down path sort of, and we'll continue on, continuing on up. And we're once again following that wall of rock here. As we continue to make our way up. And here's another very large railroad spike sticking up. Can't miss that one. And it continues up. You get the gully. Kind of like a gully to either side here. Or like an old road used to go through here again. Hitting more and more railroad spikes as we go further up. Got one right there. And they're all along here. They're just sticking up here and there. Got one right there. Mm, another one right up there. Mm, I think there's one to the right of it. And the trail continues. More railroad spikes. Looks like a nice slippery area, area we got to cross up ahead. That's the one real danger in here is slipping and getting injured on that slippery granite. More and more railroad spikes mark on the way. Because you're on the flat granite up here now and there's less of a groove in the ground to follow so thankfully there's more and more railroad spikes sticking up so they're kind of like a guide to help you get along here find your way okay get a railroad spike right here and then you've got a tree growing up in the center of the where the path went so the railroad spike will kind of tell you that yeah you just keep going straight ahead on the other side of the tree, the trail continues. And there's another rock pile right there. I haven't seen one of those in a little while, but the spikes have been pretty much mocking the way. But when you do find a rock pile, it just helps remind you that you are on the right track. Another rock pile right here. A little bit further up, just a short while after the last one we just crossed. And we continue forward. Get some more rock wall here we're following. And here we got one railroad spike solidly embedded into the granite which they couldn't remove and one that they did remove and just left behind. And you see this a lot as you get higher up. There's going to be a lot of 
We would spike that are in the ground in piles. Sometimes one, sometimes there's going to be a pile of them next to the ones that are still embedded. They just gave up after a while. They just couldn't remove them. It was just too difficult. And we got rearward spikes. That, yeah, this, they're showing up more and more now. Okay, the trail continues up through here. Get a rock pile right there. And you got the wall of rock following it still. And as I pan down here, right there, somebody's placed one railroad spike, sort of laid it down under a large rock. It's sort of like a trail marker or something. I'm going to guess that's why they put it there. And I think the reason it's there is because as I pan down behind where we just came from, you can see this nice, beautiful, scaggly tree that's grown and its branches are just come right out over the trail so you're gonna have to like duck under this stuff to get past that little point and I'm gonna guess that's why that rearward spike was placed there okay somebody's placed a rearward spike up on that rock right there where we just came through it's another one I guess they're using these as markers I guess this wasn't like this the last time I came through, so somebody's placed them up along the tops of the rocks as markers, I guess. And then we continue on up through that opening up there. We got this little, like, I don't know, undergrowth or whatever, this greenery stuff that's growing here. Once you get beyond this, you're back up in that opening up there, and it's still fairly easy to follow. Okay, past, past, we just went past that little bit of greenery. Got a railroad spike right there, right at my feet. And we're going right up through that opening up in there. It's all flat, kind of flattened out right in here. And again, like I said, look for these railroad spikes because they're sticking up everywhere. They're your, they're your guide. And there's a big pile of them right there that were pulled out of the ground and just left. So they never got to the scrap heap. Somebody couldn't get that one out and they just, they just gave up. They just left them. So we're continuing on up, looking for that last remaining piece of rail that's up here. Okay. Let me see. We've got more, more rearward spikes in here. Right there. This one right there. And there's some more up ahead. One right there. And then you're going to come to this tree which nature decided to push over. Well, we presume it was nature. And just make your way around or under that and the trail continues after that. The railroad spikes lead right up past that tree that's bent over. Yeah, we're continuing to move our way upward, but as you can see, it's still fairly easy to follow, but you got the rearward spikes all over the place, slippery as hell in here right now where we're at. So you can't really get, even though it looks like it's all, the trail is no longer here, you can still fairly, fairly easily tell where to go, and the rearward spikes are going to be your guide, so... I mean, they're all over the place. Just follow the line of spikes. More railroad spikes. A little opening here. As you can see, the granite is all wet. And this is very, very slippery. Another rock pile up there. So we're going up in there. Another pile of railroad spikes. Setting up against one that didn't get pulled out. Another pile of rusted railroad spikes. Here's on the trail, right here. You got another one right there. Next to one that's still embedded in the granite. And 
they just all through here. More railroad spikes as we continue on. And I mean they're everywhere here now. The higher you go the more and more you see they're just just they're sticking up everywhere. Got a large pile of different size railroad spikes right here. Yeah, they're all over the place. Just big pile of them here. And as we get higher and higher, we got more and more railroad spikes just everywhere. And we got to cross this slippery spot. And what I like to do is I like to brace my foot behind those spikes as I make my way up because it stops me from sliding and taking a bad fall. Oh wow, right behind that rock, I can see all kinds of railroad spikes sticking up out of, out over that rock right there. Okay, the trail continues along here. We kind of get almost like tree branches that are slowly encroaching on where the trail went, so. Okay, we just made our way through this little rough area here. Like I said, every now and then you're going to get one of these spots where you just got to go through and know that the trail is on the other side of that stuff. And as I slowly turn my camera around here, bingo, there is the last remaining rail right there that's on the mountainside. That's all the rail that's left right there, that one piece, which to this day I think the park should come and get this and put it on display somewhere. I guess it's not going to go anywhere, but still, it'd be nice to have it on display. Either that, either the park don't want to do it, maybe they ought to give it to the Bar Harbor Historic Society or something. But that's the last remaining rail. Railroad spikes. Very slippery area up ahead, I can tell that just by looking from here. Okay, here's that last remaining piece of rail from another angle. Got a pile of railroad spikes rusting next to it. And it's really too bad that somebody would not come along and claim this and preserve it and put it on display. Because I know the park has absolutely no interest in this. But it is of interest to the town of Bar Harbor, I would think. It's part of the history of the area. That last remaining piece of rail. And we will continue on up the mountain. Yep, I got a... Just a long line of railroad spikes going up here. Pretty easy to follow this. Okay, we're continuing ahead. We're now at where it looks like a worn path again. No spikes visible right here where we're at, but you've got a nice worn path. Okay. Now we're at an area where there's now, we're starting seeing a lot more spikes again. Get one right there. And right there. So we're heading up in that direction up in there. And we're continuing on through the trees here where the grounds are worn down. Okay. Sticking to that worn that worn down ground now it proved to be the right thing to do because here we have a pile of spikes behind a tree. And the trail continues up through here where we can see a few other spikes sticking up. More railroad spikes. Telling us that we're on the right track. Railroad spike. And the trail goes up in through here. Right through that little opening up there. Okay, we just have gone as far as this trail will allow you to follow it. We're like in like a, almost like a wetland area. It's like really mossy and wet. Some falling trees. 
that this is a spot I usually come to right here and just by going straight ahead I mean following the trail as far as you can and just go straight ahead I just heard a car just pass like just beyond these trees a truck just went by so the park loop road is right there so we're just gonna cut right straight through and come out on the park loop road because if there's a trail that goes right to the park loop road I don't know where it is this is where we always end up so we're gonna cut through the trees just a very short distance and the park loop road is right straight ahead okay we moved like I don't know maybe half a football field through brush and trees on a straight line just about and right here as a car is going by as I film there is the park loop road so we had to go about half a ball field through that brush and stuff and it's not marked at all you just go straight ahead and if you're not sure just wait just sit there stand there wait until you hear a car go by move in that direction that's basically all you do when you're out at the park loop road there's the way to the top of Cadillac Mountain right there don't have too much further to go when we're at the peak and right around here somewhere the railroad tracks went across the street street yeah the road but that is all seriously overgrown over there and I don't think it'd be even possible to follow it up in there and besides the the road as it goes up to the summit zigzags so it's going to keep coming cutting back and forth across where the train went nice winding roadway as we make our way down another view as we make our descent View looking up back behind us as we continue to make our way down the Cadillac Mountain Summit Road. It's just a lot easier coming back down this road than it is going back through the woods and following that trail down. There's the